With the rally in full gear and stocks at record highs, where is the best place to put fresh money to work right now? Pete. Pete. Well, you know, based upon what we're seeing right now happening in the 10-year and this steady move to the upside, I actually still think that the financials, it's just the beginning. I think this is finally the time for the financials towards the second part of the second half of the year. I think the financials actually look very good. When you look at the balance sheets, when you look at the economy, you look at the strength, if they can actually get some of that loan growth starting to kick in as well, I think this is the place to be. Now, I'm overly exposed to the banks, and I think there are some that are overly inexpensive versus some of those that are overpriced right now. But overall, I think there are many opportunities in the big financials. Why do you say you're overexposed to the banks? Why am I overexposed? Because yeah. I honestly think that that is the place, the next rotation. I mean, what we're seeing right now is this. The Part of the beauty of this market has been the strength in the rotation. We've gotten about out, of the, out yeah. of the fang. You suddenly moved to the industrials, and now you move to some of the transportations, the rails, and the rest of that. And now I think that the financials, now their time has come. Um, to start moving to the up. I mean, it was just yesterday when we were saying, oh, was this just part of a rotational move, right, right out of fangs? But today we saw everything rally. We had multiple sectors up by more than 1% apiece. Well, on one of our calls today, Karen brought up the dollar. I totally agree. In fact, the dollar was down almost 70 basis points. And I, so, you know, what do you invest in now? If you think about the rest of the world, where arguably we've continued to get weaker data points, and yet the underperformance has been more extreme than even the data should have supported. If you're in a place where the dollar is weakening and it doesn't make sense considering that yields are actually near highs, you'd expect that this would be a sign that the U.S. economy uh, is growing and that the dollar differential should be helping it. Point being, look, that dollar weakness broke through the 100 today. You buy Europe, you buy emerging markets, and you buy those places that were most hurt by a stronger dollar. What do you think of the markets here? Well, I agree with everything that Pete said. For me, I'm overweight financials as well. I mean, and she agrees with nothing I said, by the way. I, 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 well, you said some good uh, stuff. I mean, there was a lot about the dollar in there and all that. Sure. I, so that's, I, I think they should have been here before this rally, right? I was very frustrated to be owning them and just having a lag and lag, even though I think the story was really compelling. It's gotten more compelling as we've seen rates move. And they move pretty quickly and pretty just slice through like butter, right, mm -hmm. through that three-year mark. And uh, that's interesting to me that there hasn't been more of any kind of response to that. That's interesting. But I like the banks. I still think they're cheap relative to the rest of the market. For all the reasons Pete said, economy is growing. Balance sheets have never been this good, so we'll see big buybacks, dividends. Uh, not that that drives anything, but it's Dan hates bad. the banks. No, so, uh, I, 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 does. come on, Dan. What do you really no, think? He likes well, them. I, I, I would just push back and just say, you know, you're talking about this economically sensitive group that should be very exposed to, you know, a better U.S. economy, but we're also in the tenure of an expansion. We're in a tightening cycle now. We know that we've hit peak autos. We know that housing data is soft. We know that financial conditions are getting tighter. So you tell me how loan growth is what you just mentioned because yep. you're happy that you're seeing the, the you know, the 10-year above 3%. We're also seeing the narrowest, you know, uh, spread between the twos and the tens since before the financial crisis. So to me, I think you're getting this kind of dead cat bounce in some of these banks that haven't participated. I know that you've been calling and you've been calling for new highs in J.P. Morgan. You got them. Congrats, ladies. I, I mean, you know, wow. at this point, we're still you seeing... Me a lady? No, no, no <laughs> worries. Uh, but, but what I'm saying is, is that this might be nothing more than a little bit of a bounce off of... Um, so you think you it's know, short term? What we're seeing right be. now in the I, I, Listen, I, I'm just telling you that I'd be very shocked to see, you know, some of these investment banks make move back to the highs. They're still down more than 10%. This is Goldman. This is Morgan. But a City lot of the rest of this are not investment banking business. That's not what drives, like, a J.P. Morgan. No, I understand. So, so, business, so the, the two banks that are up in the year, J.P. Morgan and... Um, uh, Bank of America, two massive money center banks that should benefit greatly, but but the rest of the complex are not uh, doing particularly well. Look at Wells Fargo today. They made an announcement they're going to cut 10% of their workforce over the next few years. These are not particularly healthy institutions, despite the fact that they're cheap and their balance sheets are much less levered than they were, let's say, 10, 15 so years ago. So between City, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, all of those I th still think have plenty of upside, right? I think they're all still extremely cheap, especially City and Bank of America, and they've got exposure in different areas. But how about something like an Ameriprise? How about something like an E-Trade or a Schwab or any of those types of names where they've got incredible amounts of capital, Dan? Isn't that something that I'm not just saying yeah. Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. I'm saying the banking industry itself has room to the upside. All right. Sure. Well, let's move on to some sure. other sectors that should also benefit from a, an economy that's growing. Industrials, for instance, materials. I mean, Tim, where do you, where should, we, where can we buy at this point well, with the markets uh, of record Again, highs? If, if you look at materials and, and you look at the places where the trade war is something that at least is held in question, what truly the outlook of these companies is going to be, even though steel utilization is at all-time highs, steel prices are at all-time highs, utilization is not at all-time highs, but it's close. Um, I, I think the materials trade is very interesting. What I, what I am concerned about, first of all, is what we talk about at least regularly here. I, I'm not really sure that this is your father's 
you know, trade war. I, I think we have a dynamic here with China that is really more based upon control of the Internet, control of technology in the 21st century. That's not going to end overnight. I think the pressure on these companies continues to be very sporadic. Um, but when I look at the industrials, I would go to the autos uh, and just say, what's nice here is that actually we no longer are talking about peak autos anymore. Uh, I think the, 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 what you should be looking at with GM is that this company continues to earn six to seven, you know, it's almost seven bucks a share uh, at a time when I think their business has never been run better. And I think it's a company that's also positioned for the EV story and robo cars and robo taxis. So that's a name I like. It's a name that's really lagged this market. And it's a name I think you should I'll look at. I'll give you a name. How yeah. about something like Caterpillar? Now, I pitched this a while upgrade back. It was today. 140. They got an upgrade today. And you go over the last three years. They were earning $3 a share back in 15. You go to 16, 17, now 18. That number is now closer to 10 or maybe potentially $11 a share. So why is that? Because they have so much strength right now, and they've got all the capital. They've got incredible cash flows. And when you look at their, how they're made up right now, 50% of it's coming from the U.S. They're really focused on construction here, but you've got the international component as well. So you've got a little bit of both. We've got Tim's World and the International, because you were just talking about some of that, yep, Tim. Yep. And you've got the U.S. exposure. So that's a name where I don't uh, – when you look at where it's trading from a valuation perspective – this is a name that has plenty of upside. It's definitely, value-wise, it's well under the S&P 500, which trades at, what, 17, 18, 16, yeah. 17, something like that. And we're looking at a name that's trading at 11 or 12. I mean, this is, a, this is a stock that I think today's, that upgrade today, I think they gave it a 170 target. I think that's actually reasonable. I think that's something that they could hit in the next year. Yeah, and it wasn't just Caterpillar. They also upgraded Manitowoc. Uh, Manitowoc yeah. every day. So that's industrials. one I've had that has not worked at all, URI. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. working. They did an acquisition. I mean, they feel pretty good about their business to be doing acquisitions. I, I am a little bit concerned, though. I think any hope ever we, we ever had of an infrastructure bill is really completely gone for a while. That would have been nice. I'd like to see a little more strength in housing, but I, they're not expensive. Really not expensive, so. Yeah, I would actually push back and say infrastructure. Let's say the Dems do take the House. This is an area where in 2019, I think you could see some compromise. This is stuff that Democrats usually like to do, not Republicans. And so that would be the sort of thing where if ultimately, if the president does lose the House, right, they're going to have to compromise to get anything legislatively done going forward. And that was one area that I think would do very well. I'll just make one point. I don't like any of the value names, especially as we get to a point where we're finally back to new highs from late January in the Dow. The S&P made one um, a few weeks ago. I think you go with kind of what got you here. You go with beta, you go with momentum, you go with growth, because right now the value, they have so far to go to even get back to a kind of decent level. And I would just make one point about the but is dollar. That a is, it, is that on the charts? I mean, what's the point here? Because, because you know. we're just not, we're, we're 10 years into this recovery, and I just don't think value, you're going to see this. If, if the, if the S&P and the Dow are going to blow off, okay, I just don't think it's going to be value is going to be the next leg of it. And then obviously to put a button on the dollar thing, if EM debt and equities have been, you know, kind of weighed on pretty heavily, about the rally in the dollar from April. EEM, you know, was at 52 six months ago, went down to 40, now it's at 43. That's where you get your beta right there.